Hello, okay, so welcome back. In this video, it's gonna be slightly different to the other videos I've made. I'm focusing on a smaller, I don't know if you can call this a product, but a smaller idea for something that you can put together quickly. Build something in around half an hour. I mean, this took about 20 minutes, something like that. And it's just gonna highlight some things that I think about when I'm building something. So just to give you an overview of what this does and the thought behind it. So whenever you're writing some of the um, you know, writing apps out there like Google Docs, even Notion, they have so many different options, even you know, Microsoft Word, so many options with the toolbars that they can be a bit distracting. So the idea of this is just a really, really simple way that you can focus and set a goal. So this could be explained a little bit better here. So let's say I wanted to set myself a goal to write 10 words. I can put that in here. And then if I start writing towards my goal, you can see in the, in the corner here, it says I've got four words left to go. So left to go is four words. And once you reach your goal, you get this little celebration. Very simple. One of the other things it does as well um, is if I refresh, it saves it all into local storage. It doesn't save your, your target, but that doesn't really matter. And then there's this focus mode button, which all it does is take you into full screen. And then you can just continue writing in here. And that will then still count towards your goal. And if I press this button here, it goes back. So this is how simple it is. We also have this little download button over here, which, you know, if you're going between computers or you don't want to rely on your local storage, say you've written quite a lot, you can press this and all it would do is take the, um, the words that you've put together and save it as an HTML file. There's no extra styling with that. It's just a raw HTML file like this. So it takes out any spaces um, that you might've put in there. So if this was on a new line, I think this will take them away. Uh, well, yeah, it doesn't add the extra ones. It just moves that space out. Um, so you can see what you have there. In terms of the confetti celebration, we use this library here. So we just paste in this and then trigger it to start. And there's a few options there you can customize. Um, but that's the gist of it. Now let's take a look at the code and see how this actually is put together. Okay, so here we are in Atom. And as you can see, it's very, very basic. So one of the things I like to do when I'm building something to begin with is if I've got this rough idea of how it should look in my head, I don't really care too much about how I put it together. I wanna to just see something quickly on the screen. So I usually start um, sometimes with like a, a normalized CSS, something like that in the background, and then start putting in elements. So as you can see here, I just had these buttons. I think I put them in first of all, and then you've obviously got a button to focus, a button here to close the full screen, and then we have our input. So it was mainly input how many you want, and it will count down. So here's the way you input this, a number of words. And then over here, this part is where it will count down. So all at the start, it should say start typing. So if we refresh this, or actually if we take it away and refresh, you can briefly see it does that, but because I'm focused, it's not gonna do it. But that's because of local storage. Check our local storage. We can see if we go to application, local storage, then click on the file. We can see here we have this element just here. If I delete that and then refresh, you can see we have start typing. So that's like the default empty state. Now you could play around with this if you wanted to and have this appear you know, over the top of the page a bit more so it's a bit more clear. And then we have the way you can switch between words and characters. So if we go back to the code, you can see that in there. So that's where they will start to count down. And then all this basically does is we have a, a listener to see when they're typing. And then on key up over here, and where is it? On change over here, so if they change their target number of words to type or they start typing in the text area, it's gonna trigger this function to run. So if we have a look at this count words function, you can see all it does is grab all of the information from that element. So we have, where we have div class, that's basically just the, the area. So inside here, we have a holder just for styling and then this area. So all that does is contain all of our um, our words that we're typing. And the important thing to note here, because we're not using a text area or an input box, this is a, just a plain normal div, but it's set to content editable, which means you can click onto it and type and adjust it. So it's quite a easier way of, of changing things. 
So if we scroll back down to that count words function, we can see we grab the inner text and the inner HTML. The inner HTML is easier for checking words, um, but again, that's more, well, no, not for, not for tracking words. That's for saving the state of what we've actually typed in. So if they've, you know, gone in and made certain parts bold. So if say testing the save, so say we made this bold, that shouldn't make any difference to the word count because it's actually behind the scenes. If we inspect this, it's obviously going to add, you know, the bold tags around this element. So if we were to grab all the HTML, that would be counted in, especially for characters that'll be counted in, which we don't want to do. All we want to track is this, but when we're saving it, so if I refresh and come back, we want to make sure we save that as well. So that's just when you're saving it to your page. So you can see all it does here is update our local storage with the, the words, which is this part just here. Otherwise, we just want to see what the text is inside there. That's the difference between inner HTML and inner text might be useful. But after that, all we do is split everything based on the spaces. So ideally, I mean, this is quite rough, but you can see each space means there should be a word. Um, and if we wanted to, uh, you know, add extra checks here, we can see well, what we're doing next actually before that is we grab the amount of words that we're looking for. So again, the button input value, so that's the total that we're looking for. And then down here, what you can see this, this part here, here, this part here actually, is where we're checking to see if it's actually empty. So an empty paragraph, we don't want to listen to that. Um, and it just means as well that we can replace out any empty paragraphs that are there. So that's not included when we're counting. But otherwise, we just go down here and we check if we're counting for words or characters. And that just depends which way we count this. So if it's characters, you know, it's a slightly different calculation. If it's words, it's, it's just the words. And then all we do after that is update the total with whatever um, we found. So you can here see here if it's count. So that's what we want to get to just here. So if it's characters, count is just the length of everything that's been typed in. So including spaces as well. If it's not, you know, it won't change this. So the count will still be equal to, where is it? Up here. So we're just splitting it from the words. Otherwise, we just want to then take the sum count. So that is the target number. And that'll be equal to the sum count, take away however many words or however many uh, characters that they typed in so far, if that makes sense. Explain that quite badly. Um, but once we've checked that, we see if, if it's empty, so if there's nothing left, if you've typed in all the words that you need, we trigger the confetti, which I'll show in a moment. And then all we do is just update that total. So it's really simple. For the confetti, if you've got any questions on that, you know, let me know, but I'll share all the code for this. Um, in GitHub and just put a link in the description. Um, so down here for trigger confetti, we just use, uh, so first we set, you know, a global uh, variable just here on the window as false. So we can see if confetti is currently running or not. And then in here, so in the trigger confetti, if it's not currently falling with confetti, start the confetti. And then after 10 seconds, stop it, you know, don't want it to be an ongoing thing. So it just runs for 10 seconds. And then we have a stop confetti function here, which just stops it. And that is how it links up with the library that I mentioned just here. So that's where that's hosted on the CDN. Um, so that's a quick overview of how that works. Obviously we have other parts as well. So these functions here, if I just grab that. So when they first, let's see what we have. So yeah, load progress. This is what we run at the very, very start of the page. So when the page opens, we want to check to see if the user has typed anything before. So from local storage. So if I start at the start of this function, you can see what we first do is we grab any current um, information from local storage like this. And then we want to make sure that we can set this, if there's anything there, to the area. What we want to do then is make sure that the user is typing. So they're, you know, their cursor is inside that box. And you can do that in a couple of ways. We have to have these extra checks just here, as you can see for um, set end of content editable, in case they um, have a lot of you know typing in there, if they've got a lot of words. Say so I had you know, all of this and more, a 
and more and more and then I refresh you can see my cursor is set right to the bottom there um, so the way you do that it's different on each browser so it's a few checks you have to have um, so I'll go to that in a moment but before that we just make sure that we're listening um, to see what they're typing in so we know that if they press enter we should set a paragraph rather than a div just so it's easy to track that um, anyway so back to this part here all we're doing is as you can see we have a few checks for different browsers um, by the way for this part here and when you're putting something together quickly it's fine just to search around and find what's going to help fit in with your you know your test code so essentially this is just a, a way of testing if this idea is something i want to pursue um, so you can you know, search around the constant overflow places like that even copen you know put bits of code in there test it because the main thing we're looking for here is does this idea work is this something that we think could could be a product could actually be useful could help people and if it is then we will go through you know probably add um, user accounts and then develop it in a more considered way I suppose um, but when you're putting things together and you're testing an idea of course you want to do that it's about speed and trying to find things quickly um, so grabbing code like this you know make sure you're aware of what it does as well you, know, you don't want to just paste anything in um, so you'll test it a few times on the different browsers but you want to save time and that's what this definitely does so anyway, that's that part um, and then we have our, our buttons for going full screen and then closing it again and all that does is just link up to these buttons so when we're in full screen we have focus mode or we have exit focus mode when we can show that button we just show the focus mode button and then all that does is request to go full screen um, quite straightforward there and it's the opposite for closing it so as you can see over here for these buttons um, they're just set in here on click so ideally you'd want to have them within an event listener rather than just on click but like I mentioned when I'm doing this I want to make sure it's quickly put together um, so you can see the idea come together um, and if you want to see this you can actually go to my website um, russellr.co.uk forward slash right I've got a live version of this up there just to test it you know see if it's um, looking okay and then for the download note um, last part I'll mention so all that does is clear out any any divs so we want to split that out into a just a, a line break we take out any empty elements um, you know remove spaces change out um, the HTML version of an and sign just for the, the character and the same thing with more than and less than symbols um, just because it means then if you wanted to copy that and move that into um, you know a blog post for example sometimes they can mess things up a little bit so it just strips out all of that and then all we do is we set it uh, make sure you set the data type so this is generating a, a link that has all of that data that we've just cleaned up in line so you can see here so we have our note where we're just grabbing all the HTML we perform all of these checks just here then we create a save button that goes in the oh, we already have the button there but we're changing it to have this attribute of download and then we have this uh, data type just here it's going to have all the information for that file we want to download generated in line just there so that keeps it nice and easy um, and we clean that as well so it's it should work but as I mentioned it's quickly put together so we can test it um, so that is just about everything I think that this does super simple um, and it's just a quick way of testing an idea putting it together and then launching it and see what people think um, so yeah that is how to create a very 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 simple text editor um, focus mode typing place if you've got any questions on how to put this together or the ideas sort of behind building things so my goal with this channel is to help people create things with software so you could be you know experienced as a developer and just watching to see what nonsense I'm building or you could be looking into development for the first time and wondering you know how to create things because so many times I see people get overwhelmed with the complexity of stuff because you know development is such a varied thing there's so many different aspects to it you can get caught up in am I using the right um, tool here is this the right language I should be using you know it's not working why is there a bug and people can you know, sort of get stuck on that so what I want to try and show is you know you don't need to overcomplicate things you can do something quickly put it together test it then improve it later you know you can always go through as long as you're not um, 
you know, one worry people have is about technical debt and things like that. That's not really an issue when you're first putting something together. If you know, you know if you're working within a company, you obviously you want to be a bit more structured with how you're doing things, but you're not going at that breakneck speed. So you can take a bit more time to think about things, plan, and, and you're usually working within a team. But when you're testing things out, you know, say I wanted to learn a new, um, say for example, Superbase, if I wanted to learn that, you want to test, you want to try and break things so that, not necessarily break things, but you want to see where the issues are so that you remember it more. Um, but anyway, this video was about how you can put things together. Hopefully it was useful. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.